Hey, have you ever been filling out a form online and you get down to the bottom of the form and there's this box that has a jumbled letter number combo in it and they expect you to fill that out and hit submit? What happens if you get it wrong? Good luck trying to do it again. Well, that is known as CAPTCHA and CAPTCHA stands for completely automated public Turing test to tell humans and computers apart. So today on Twitter, I tweeted what the acronym stood for and I got some really funny replies. Now, um, Allison, for example, said, I, I never knew. I thought it was named by a Long Islander trying to phonetically spell capture. Well, Allison's pretty right about that. It was based on the word capture. Uh, a group uh, at Carnegie Mellon University uh, created uh, the word captcha, the idea and concept of it, around 2000. And um, the goal of a captcha is to stop computers and automated programs from submitting information or data. Most of us see that in terms of signing up for something like getting a new email account or, you know, for a new service that you see online, they'll have you fill out a CAPTCHA because they don't want a bunch of fake signups, right? Um, now, there are several challenges with using CAPTCHA in general. The first one is accessibility. So if you are visually impaired, it's going to be hard for you to fill out a CAPTCHA looking at it. So the workaround has been to add in like an audio CAPTCHA. But what happens if you're visually and auditorily impaired? Uh-oh, we still have a problem, right? And even people who don't have impairments of vision and hearing, they still have problems filling out CAPTCHAs, right? I mean, I'm looking sometimes and I'm like, what does that say? Now, when do you have to fill out a CAPTCHA? If you're signing up for email, like Gmail or Hotmail, if you wanted to list something on Craigslist, you got to fill out a CAPTCHA there. Uh, even if you're purchasing airline tickets, you sometimes have to fill out a CAPTCHA. eBay, pretty much anything you can think of, whether it requires you plugging in a credit card or not, they want you to do a CAPTCHA. Now, um, Turing comes from Alan Turing, who created this test like in 1950, and the test was to be able to tell the difference between a human and a computer, if there were two subjects and an interrogator, right? So think back to like HAL, right, from Space Odyssey, or like the Terminator, right? Um, and to some point, or even data on Star Trek. But at some point, um, although the, the answers can be very similar for humans and computers, there's a point where computers just can't think, right? And like Data, Data got the special chip because he wanted to feel. Anyway, that's where Turing comes from. Uh, and so this test, though, uh, you know, this CAPTCHA thing, it can be a really big hassle. Now, there have been alternatives that have been suggested. Like, my favorite is Kitten Off, which actually, instead of showing you letters and numbers, um, it will actually show you pictures or images. In this case, like, please select which one is a kitten. And maybe it'll have an elephant, a uh, cat, and a dog, right? So you want to click on the cat. Now, another obstacle uh, with CAPTCHAs is language. Not everybody speaks the English language. And I know when I look at Arabic or Japanese, I don't know what those characters say, right? It can be pretty challenging. Even um, accents in French, I'm not sure. So just imagine that too. Now, let's look at um, the big picture here. Um, there are people who make applications and they want people to enjoy using those applications. Now on the other side, there's the internet. Ooh, it's kind of the wild west out there. And so in between is a form that people can fill out to get access to the application, but they have to get from the internet, right? Um, imagine, uh, for example, email uh, systems, like Gmail, for example. Google purchased a, an email uh, filtering uh, company, so that's why you almost never get spam in your inbox. So that's something that um, developers who are making applications can think about. So rather than having this CAPTCHA on the front end, which can be a drag, look at some sort of filtering system. Maybe it could be based on IP address. There, there are really a lot of different options there. Uh, that way you're not putting, you're not offloading the hassle onto the customer. Now I'm not saying someone would like abandon filling out a form because there's a CAPTCHA, but it could certainly leave a bad taste in their mouth, you know, like, oh, it's always so hard to fill out. I've also seen some funny and humorous cap captures. I don't think they meant to be, but, um, and I've almost seen swear words. So that's always kind of fun. Um, so as, as someone out there on the internet, you're probably gonna have to fill out captures. If you don't like, you know, this capture you're filling out, especially if it's a government agency, if it's a product that you use, uh, and if you just find it too difficult, complain, let them know. Get some signatures together and say, you know what, this CAPTCHA is really a drag. Is it really necessary? You know, and, and you may say, yes, it is, but we feel it's not. And if you are an application developer, offer the option uh, for your customer, if they're using your system to um, kind of white label and sell it to others, to disable the CAPTCHAs. Maybe they don't want to use CAPTCHAs. And if you're setting up a new website and you're, you're creating a form on your site so people can fill it out, before you rush out and add a CAPTCHA, just try not using a CAPTCHA. 
those would be some of my tips because I'll tell you, I have my email address publicly out there on the internet. I also have a form which doesn't have a CAPTCHA and I rarely get spam. Uh, you know, maybe I get one a month, which for me is not really a big deal when I get 30 uh, to 100 valid inquiries per month, right? So one bad spam, perfectly fine with me. So those are some tips and some information about the word CAPTCHA and now, you know, knowing is half the battle. Make sure to embrace your inner nerd and enjoy using your technology.